Welcome to the inaugural episode of Health Check, a series of podcasts on health issues. I'm your host, Salma Khalik, Senior Health Correspondent with The Straits Times. Today, we take a look at Singapore's war against diabetes. With me is our special guest, Health Minister Gan Kim Yong, who will give us an update on the war and what else he has up his sleeves in Singapore's fight against diabetes. Mr. Gan, so what has been happening in the war? We started the war in 2016 when mm-hmm. we declared this uh, in Parliament. Over the last two years, uh, we have made uh, significant progress in the war. Uh, but as I said, the war is going to be a, a long war, and we are at the initial stages of the war, and we do expect the efforts to continue, in fact, to step up over time. Uh, just to give you a few examples, uh, we look at the efforts on the war in three directions. Mm-hmm. First, we look at uh, screening. Uh, uh, and uh, detection. We also look at uh, prevention and for those who have already have the disease, we look at how we can improve the management to prevent the deterioration. Right, so let's take it one at a time. So screening, Mm. what has happened with screening? On the screening front, we have uh, rolled out the Screen for Life uh, program recently and this has made the screening more easily available to those who are uh, at risk and uh, for especially for those who are younger may have who have uh, higher risk factors we have also made the screening available to them we have also enhanced the subsidy for screening as well as the follow up uh, consultation this will ensure that the screening will be affordable and even the follow up will continue to be affordable but we more? cannot stop here because uh, it's not just the screening but the uh, compliance to the uh, mm-hmm. uh, doctor's instructions is very important so we also need to continue to reach out to our uh, population to encourage them to adopt a healthier lifestyle. And this uh, touches on our, my earlier point about preventive health. And on the preventive uh, front, we have also been uh, making uh, uh, significant progress, especially on the diet side. As we know, many of us uh, eat out. And uh, based on our survey, we found that uh, our efforts over the last two years has been uh, encouraging. Uh, the number of healthier meals sold under our health din- healthier di- dining program doubled to 50 million in the uh, financial year tw- 2017 compared to 26 million uh, just a, a year lot. ago. That's a huge jump, isn't it? Yes, and we hope we will continue this momentum to mm. encourage uh, more Singaporeans to go for healthier options. By the end, uh, it is still a decision, individual decision. So we would like to uh, help this uh, Singaporeans to make better decisions, informed decisions, and to encourage a mindset shift so that they are more aware of the options available and to be able to uh, choose a more uh, healthier option. Mr. Khan, may I ask a very personal question? I understand you are rather fond of chicken rice. Have you given it up altogether or do you still eat it? <laughs> uh, I still eat the chicken rice occasionally, uh-huh. uh, but uh, I adopt a 3 R strategy which I also encourage the Singaporeans to adopt. And firstly, uh, if you can, refrain from eating uh, too much of this unhealthy stuff like right. chicken rice. Uh, but if you do want to eat, occasionally you can do so. But try to reduce the quantity of mm. uh, chicken rice uh, and that will help to keep you healthy. And if you uh, reduce and refrain, uh, by the same time, it is also possible to replace. Say for example, uh, for chicken rice, you can replace with uh, some uh, mix of uh, brown rice and that will uh, at least uh, make it a healthier option uh, in addition to refraining and uh, reducing. So three R's, reduce, uh, uh, refrain, reduce and replace. So we should eat healthier but we do not absolutely have to give up everything that we enjoy eating just because they are unhealthy. That's right. I think in moderation and always uh, be mindful that there are healthier options and at the end, as I said, it's a personal choice Mm -hmm. that uh, we hope Singaporeans will choose a healthier option. Right. So what else have you got in, in your war against diabetes? Is this it or have you got other things that you plan to introduce as well? Uh, I think uh, war on diabetes uh, in the end is not just about more and more measures or more and more uh, ideas or initiatives, but uh, it's about um, uh, making the whole environment uh, more supportive of a healthier living and allow individuals to make uh, uh, the right choice to choose a healthier option, to help to choose a healthier lifestyle. But we do have uh, some measures that we are uh, exploring and see whether we can uh, push it a little bit further and push the war front uh, a little bit further as well. Uh, one example is uh, uh, drink water 
you know, drinking plain water. Mm -hmm. And uh, several years ago, we started an initiative to encourage school students to drink plain water in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and recently, we have also rolled out uh, uh, initiatives to encourage uh, more uh, public to uh, take in um, plain water instead of uh, sugar drinks. Uh, we uh, introduce um, uh, a lot more drinking points in our parks and in our CCs. In my own CC uh, uh, community club, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we do provide the drinking fountain to allow our population, our residents, visitors uh, to have access to plain drinking water so that they don't have to buy uh, sugar drinks. Will you increase those uh, water points? Because uh, right now you have them in certain places, but not everywhere, right? Indeed, uh, we are uh, working with the uh, various stakeholders uh -huh. to see how we can make uh, water, plain drinking water, more readily available in the different parts of Singapore. Mm. Uh, in our parks, for example, we will be working with uh, M Parks to see where practical we introduce more uh, drinking points. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be working with the NEA to see how we can install uh, more drinking uh, 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 points for our patrons to our uh, hawker centres, our markets and so on. I think these are very important uh, initiatives. Right. We also uh, have been working with the uh, People's Association mm -hmm. to make uh, uh, plain water available for all our catering uh, activities and this is making progress. It will take time for some of these practices mm -hmm. uh, to be implemented and to take root on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mr Gan, there are some countries uh, like Thailand and Brunei that started sugar tax. Uh, other places where uh, they try to reduce the uh, sugar intake uh, only on the uh, prepackaged drinks. Does Singapore have any plans to follow suit or is it something we're not going to go into? It is indeed uh, something that we are studying very mm -hmm. carefully, uh, but we take a more a holistic approach towards the uh, sugar drinks. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, various um, possible measures that we are uh, thinking about. Uh, one example is the, uh, on the labelling. So we think a better labelling uh, system may be able to help consumers make uh, uh, more informed decisions. Today, the drinks and the food uh, items are all labelled with their nutrition and their sugar content, for example. But some of these labelling may not be so easy to read. Very confusing, yeah. actually. Very confusing. And sometimes they are in numbers and, and uh, uh, consumers may not have uh, a, a way to understand what these numbers mean mm. to them. So I think maybe easier to introduce some kind of a labeling system that either is a coloring system or an index system that's easier for them to recognize which are the healthier ones and which are the less healthier ones so that they can make an uh, 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 informed decision. I and think that would be a great help. Yes, and right. this is something that we are studying and many other countries have introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, UK, for example, has a color-coded system and uh, France has a, a scoring system. So these are various alternatives that we are studying mm -hmm. and to adapt them into our own culture, our own mm -hmm. society to see which one will be more effective. The second area, as you mentioned, is uh, sugar tax. Mm -hmm. uh, more uh, tax on the sugar uh, sweetened beverages, specifically the uh, packaged drinks. As you mentioned, it uh, has been impl implemented in several countries. Right. And we are studying the effects of these uh, measures and how we can uh, adapt them into uh, Singapore. So it's something that we will uh, be uh, launching a public consultation in time to come and to get the views from the public with regard to the various measures and how effective they think they are. And we also will welcome ideas and suggestions. Uh, one other possible measure that we, we are thinking about is whether we can uh, have uh, rules and uh, uh, guidelines on the advertising of uh, sugar drinks mm -hmm. so that we will encourage uh, consumption of healthier alternatives rather than to promote the consumption of uh, unhealthy drinks. So these are a package of uh, various measures that we'll be considering. Right. Mr. Khan, exercise is also very important in uh, preventing and, uh, uh, diabetes, maintaining good health, reducing obesity. Any progress on that front? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, we have uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, programs and initiatives on encouraging active lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, at various age groups. One of the well-known ones is probably our National Steps Challenge. And based on our latest uh, uh, data, shows that our Season 3 of the National Steps Challenge has seen about 690,000 sign-ups compared uh, to the previous mm -hmm. season, which was uh, just uh, 350,000. So this is almost doubling the previous season. Uh, but beyond these uh, campaigns and programs, we hope that uh, the uh, Singaporeans will continue to maintain a healthy lifestyle. 
and therefore we are also working with uh, uh, HDB, with uh, Parks, and with uh, Active SG to see how we can make uh, facilities more uh, readily available for many of these uh, Singaporeans who want to st uh, stay active. Park Connector is one great thing that we have introduced. Now we have linked up almost the entire Singapore and we organise regularly with our uh, citizens, our residents to go on these uh, activities. I too, uh, quite, uh, I'm quite involved in our community uh, active uh, uh, programmes in the constituency. What so do every you do? Saturday, Sunday, <coughs> uh, I will join them. Uh, the typical ones are the brisk walking where we walk uh, 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 some distance with our residents and we chit chat along the way so time passes easily but in the, in the meantime, in the process, you get healthier. And I also participate in this uh, uh, activity called Roli Chiu. It's a very interesting uh, uh, activity where you use a bat and a ball and you uh, move with the bat and the ball, you make sure that the ball doesn't fall off. Uh, so it's quite challenging, it looks very simple but it requires a lot of practice and skill and it is quite strenuous and you actually sweat a lot. So it is a very good form of uh, exercise. Really? You'll have to show me that one day. Yes, and last week, I just uh, two weeks ago, I just uh, participated in a program called uh, K-Pop X. It's an exercise program based on K-Pops and it is uh, very, very tiring but it is a very uh, good and uh, mm. uh, active uh, activity. Looks like you really walk the talk. <laughs> I try to. Thank you very much, Mr. Gan. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Do look out for the next episode of Health Check on The Straits Times, where we also have podcasts on a variety of topics from business to sports. Mm -hmm.